The Detroit Pistons have finally found their head coach for the next seemingly six years. They have hired former Phoenix Suns head coach Monty Williams to be their head coach. We're going to talk about all this and why this is great news in today's episode of the Locked On Pistons podcast. You are Locked On Pistons, your daily Detroit Pistons podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's the deal? Welcome back to another episode of the Locked On Pistons podcast. Per usual, I'm your host, Kuka Hill. You can find me over on Twitter, at Kuka Hill. I want to thank you guys for making Locked On Pistons your first listen of every single day. We are free and available on all your podcast platforms. And if you haven't already, head to the YouTube channel, at Locked On Pistons. Hit that subscribe button, or leave us a five-star review on whatever podcast platform you're listening to us on. That's another great way to support the podcast. The Detroit Pistons finally have their head coach, And it is not Kevin Ollie, it is not Charles Lee, it is Monty Williams, former head coach, former coach of the year with the Phoenix Suns. It looked like he was out the league for at least a year. He was going to be getting paid the next three years from Phoenix Suns. He might have taken a year off. But Tom Gores, which we'll talk about later on, went out there at the buzzer and said, Monty, you're our coach, please come coach the Pistons. Opened up his checkbook as wide as it possibly could get and wrote him basically an empty check. So we're going to talk about all this. Who fits with Monty? Is this changing the expectations? Why are we excited for Monty Williams as head coach? We're going to talk about all that uh, in this episode, so stay tuned for all that. But before we get into all that, I do have to update you guys. A lot of you guys have been commenting and reaching out. I know I told you guys I'd be out for a week because I was going to be with my wife. I did get to come home tonight because I can't stay tonight at the hospital. So I was able to come home tonight. Big news happened, so I said, you know what, I'm at home. I'll record anyways. I do want to update you guys. Her surgery did go well. It was successful. She's doing fine. Um, and they they were able to remove everything from her brain. So um, it, it went well. It went well. She has a long road ahead of her recovering. And all of you guys who have donated to the GoFundMe that we created for her to pay the medical bills, man, it's just I, I want to get to Monty, man, but I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't record this podcast without saying thank you to all you guys, man. It's it's. All I can say is thank you, man. I don't want I don't want to get emotional on here, but thank you guys seriously so so much, man. I I I appreciate every single one of you. Um, but anyways, that let, let's let's get to some piston news, man. Monty Williams. So it literally so so look Shams and James Edwards for obviously the Detroit Pistons beat writer James Edwards III. They came out with an article and it talked about how the Pistons were able to get this to happen, how they were able to get Monty Williams to be their head coach. Because initially, he said no. Initially, it looked like he was leaning towards sitting out the year, spending time with family, because he was going to get paid the next three years from Phoenix. So he was going to sit out. But reading this article describing how the Pistons were able to get him to be their head coach, it reads like the Golden State Warriors when they went after KD after losing that 2016 Finals. That's what it sounded like. Like, that's what, that's what it, it, it read like. Like, there's a point in this where it says that Tom Gores sent a private plane to Monty Williams to bring him to his house and then sat down in Gores' living room in California to talk about being his head coach and basically, or being the Pistons head coach and basically writing an empty check for him. They went all out. Tom Gores was the one, which it says in this article, that the exact quote he said was, what if we go back to Monty? Even after he said no. So Tom Gores was insistent on getting Monty Williams to be the head coach of the Detroit Pistons. So they did not go with Kevin Ollie. They did not go with Charles Lee. They did not go with any um they didn't go with any non-experienced head coach. They didn't go with a with an assistant coach looking for his first job. They didn't go with a guy coming out that hadn't been in the NBA looking for his first chance in the NBA. They went with a guy who has previously won Coach of the Year in the last three years, who has made the NBA Finals within the last three years, who has won 50 games in a regular season multiple times over the last few years. They went with a dude who was probably the best coach, I feel like, on the market at this point. If you want to talk about earlier in this offseason, if you want to say you think Ime Udoka was the was the best head coach, if you want to say Nick Nurse was before he got hired, like you guys can argue about that. But no doubt, I think Monty was one of the best coaches on the market and a coaching search that a lot of us were feeling like was a bit out of sorts and was, was, was suspect and 
um, well, what's the uh, unorthodox to say the least? It ended up getting them. They ended up getting Monty Williams, which I told you guys, I believe last week, that if if it took all of this to happen for them to end up with the right coach, which I believe Monty is, I'm completely cool with it. I'm completely cool with it. And that's exactly what happened. So let's dive into a little bit more details with how they are the contract that they signed Monty Williams to. So it is a hefty, 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 hefty contract. Monty Williams will be the most paid coach or the highest paid coach in the NBA with the Detroit Pistons. The deal is worth it's six years with a possible seventh and eighth year team options on those. Possible seventh, eighth year on it. Six year deal worth up to $78.5 million. And the totality of the deal is worth a potential $100 million with the Detroit Pistons over the length of this contract with incentives in there, with the team options in the seventh and eighth year. This is, they emptied their pockets for Monty Williams. Monty Williams told them no at first. He told multiple teams no, that he was going to sit out. And they came back and said, well, say no to this. You're going to have to say no to this kind of bag that we're about to, we're backing up the Brinks truck for you. You're going to have to say no to this. And Monty Williams, this is too, hey, there's a price point for everybody. There, there, there's a line that you can meet. There's a money point that you can meet for everybody. And the Pistons met his. And they got it done. They absolutely got it done. Tom Gores got it done. I'm so happy that Tom Gores was able to do this. Uh, look, now that, Tom, now that uh, Monty Williams, that is, is the head coach of the Pistons, I didn't want Kevin Ollie as the Pistons head coach. Um, I, I was fine with Charles Lee as the head coach. But I had been saying for a minute, I would have been cool with a new head, a new coach being like the uh, assistant coach who's looking for his first job. I would have been cool with that. But I had said for a while that the fact they didn't even interview former head coaches or at least interview some guys who had experiences in the NBA as a head coach, it, it, I didn't feel right about that. I didn't like that. And now they went out and got a guy who had, was just coach of the year a few years ago, who had just been in the NBA Finals. And really, I think the only reason why he really got fired from the Phoenix Suns is because they acquired Kevin Durant, the expectations rose, where it really was unrealistic. They only got to play, like, what, 13 games together with KD? And then DeAndre Aiden, Monty probably didn't handle that situation best with DeAndre Aiden, but it, DeAndre Aiden didn't handle that situation the best for himself either. So, honestly, I don't really know if he should have been fired, but I'm happy he was because now he ends up with the Detroit Pistons, and the Pistons have their coach seemingly what it looks like for the next five to six years. So, I, look, man, I can't wait. I can't wait to see this see this team with Monty. Um, and that's probably going to lead you guys to the question of, why are you so excited to see Monty? Who's going to fit with Monty? Who, who gains the most from having Monty Williams as their head coach? We're going to talk about all that when we come back. But first, I've got to tell you guys about one of our sponsors, this one. I've got to tell you guys, it's FanDuel. Make a fast break to FanDuel during the NBA playoffs, during the NBA Finals, because right now new customers can get a no-sweat first bet up to $2,500. That's $2,500 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. And why I love FanDuel so much is because you can do same-game parlays. You can put, you know, you can take the assist, the over on assist with the play. You can take the over on points with the play. You can take the money line with the play. You can take the spread, and you can put them all into the same-game parlay. And double, triple, quadruple the amount of money you can win on FanDuel. It's safe and secure, and you can get paid instantly if you win. There's no better place to bet all the playoff action than America's number one sports book. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Again, no sweat first bet up to $2,500. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the NBA. So I want to thank you guys again for making Locked On Pistons your first listen of every single day. We're free and available on all your podcast platforms. If you haven't already, head to the YouTube channel at Locked On Pistons. Hit that subscribe button or leave us a five-star review on whatever podcast platform you're listening to this on. That's another great way to support the podcast. So, moves on to the question of who fits with Monty? Why should you be excited about Monty? What does Monty bring that's different from what the Pistons already had? That's what everyone's wondering about, and I am here to help answer those questions. But first, let me take a drink of some water, man. It's it's hot in here. My AC, for some reason, is I haven't been home. I've been with my wife in the hospital, so I haven't been home. I come home, it's hot as hell in here. That water, man, that, 
that water hits different, man. It's the best drink out there, I'm telling you. All you need, air, water. You feel me? Um, but anyways, so the reason why I like Monty so much for the Detroit Pistons is that I feel like the Pistons, and we've talked about this on the episode a few weeks ago when it first said, or it was first rumored that the Pistons would be interested in Monty. Monty Williams, what he what he had in Phoenix, what he was empowering in Phoenix, what he was um, the main focus, what, what was the main focus of that team in Phoenix is going to be the exact same thing in Detroit. Detroit is going to be led. They need a coach who will empower there are two guards, Kay Cunningham and Jay Nivey. And they need a coach who will empower and utilize their third building block, which is Jalen Duran. They need somebody they needed somebody who could empower all three of those guys, put them in the best positions to succeed, surround them with the right pieces to play the right way that will maximize these guys. What did Phoenix have? Oh, they had Devin Booker and Chris Paul with DeAndre Aiden. They had two guards that they empowered. They had two guys uh, at their guard positions that was the focus of their offense, that they ran all their offense through, that empowered them on each offensive possession. That's what the Detroit Pistons need with Cade and Ivy, and that's what Monty Williams is going to do. They need somebody who will empower Jalen Duran. And with the offense that Monty Williams likes to play, which we'll talk about, or likes to run, which we'll talk about in a second, You'll see Jalen Duran making decisions with the ball in, the hand, in his hands. You'll see Jalen Duran be a focal point of the offense. It doesn't mean they're going to run their whole offense through Jalen Duran. It doesn't mean they're going to be giving them post-ups to go score or something. But you guys will see. You guys will see. Jalen Duran will be, will be tasked with making quick decisions. They'll be utilizing his passing. They'll be utilizing his athleticism on the offensive end. It's going to be beautiful to see. I can't wait to see it. I, I, th- this is by far what I'm most excited about with the Detroit Pistons and Monty Williams being their head coach is their offense. Because Monty Williams, if you go and look up, I believe it was the athletic article um, talking about Monty Williams to Detroit from, uh, oh, not the athletic article, I believe it was from Mark Stein. But either way, Monty Williams has like an offense. And it's not like, it's not too, it's not literal to the point where like, oh, if you don't make uh, make a decision to either shoot or pass and like that, you're getting bench count. It's not literal, but you get the idea is that it's like a 0.5 second offense to where you need to be able to make quick decisions. You don't want long drawn out ISOs. You're not trying to stop ball movement. If something's there, you take it. If you can create something, take it. If you can take a shot, take it. If you can pass, pass it. But what we're not going to do is hold the ball, sit there, trying to ISO, jab step, not pass the ball throughout an offense. You need to be high feel, a high processor, and a fine passer to play in Monty Williams' offense. And that right there is why I am so excited for Monty Williams to be the head coach of this team. The Detroit Pistons, which I got this stat from Jack Kelly, who we've had on the podcast quite a few times before. He is a writer over at Detroit Bad Boys. Um, But last season, the Detroit Pistons were 28th in passes per game, 27th in assists per game, 28th in touches per game. They were 4th in average seconds per touch, First in dribbles per touch, and 28th in offensive rating. The Detroit Pistons did not pass the ball a ton. They held the ball way too long, and they constantly dribbled, dribbled, dribbled when they passed the ball. It wasn't a lot of ball movement. It was constantly a bunch of guys, which we talked about in the podcast so many times last year. It was just a bunch of guys out there. They rolled the ball out and said, here you go, go do something. And every guy out there, even if it's not their game, Even if it wasn't their game, they went out there and were trying to do things with the ball in their hands that just didn't make sense to do. It didn't make sense for the offense. It didn't make sense for them individually. And that's not something that Monty Williams will be standing for. It's not part of Monty Williams' offense. It's quick decisions. you got to be able to process things, process the defense, make the right play, make the right read, like that, like that, like that. And it all starts with your two guards orchestrating everything. And I think Jane Ivey still needs to develop in that area. And he did throughout his rookie season. He's going to get a lot better. But this, Cade's going to take off, man. I can't, Cade's going to have the ball in his hands. He's going to have spacing around him just like Monty likes. He's going to have spacing around him just like he did for Devin Booker and CP3 and Phoenix. And Cade's going to have a spaced out floor. He's going to be given reads to make that he can process from, which made him such a great prospect coming into the NBA that he can process reads like that, like that, like that. Get through his reads quickly and make the right read 
when it's there. I, Cade, this is the exact type of thing that Cade would thrive in. He's going to be absolutely amazing. He's going to see, you're going to see how cerebral Cade is with his IQ for the game and feel for the game. That's what made Cade such a great, great, there's other things that made him a great prospect. But his feel for the game, how quickly he processes things and can make the right read. You, you, I know he missed this whole last season, but honestly, I don't think you it would have even been as on display as you would have liked this past season because of what the Pistons were putting on the floor and the kind of offense they ran. With what the with what's the Phoenix or with how Monty ran Phoenix and what he's going to bring to Detroit, there's a bunch of YouTube videos. I watched like five or six of them explaining how the Phoenix Suns ran their offense, some of their schemes, some of their sets, how they like to get into things. It explains it all, and it all goes through their guards. And you need your guards to be high level guy, high level processors, high field guys, and guys who can make the right read. And I'm telling you, Cade fits all that to it. Cade's going to take off. You, if the Pistons combine this hire of Monty Williams with getting Cade just some damn spacing in free agency, go get some guys that can space the floor. Cade's going to go crazy next year, man. It's, he's going he's gonna to take off. He's going to take off. I can't wait. Jane Ivey, too. Jane Ivey will t- continue to improve. Jalen Duran will continue to improve. And there's some other players that are going that Monty Williams will absolutely love. There are some players he's going to love. Isaiah Lewis, I think he's going to like that guy. You remember at the end of last season, I talked about how once they trade Sadiq Bey, the Pistons' way of giving him more of a role was, oh, here you go, here's the ball, go try to create some. We started to see him create more off the dribble. And that's not what you want from Livers. You want to give him more minutes. You want to try to give him more catch-and-shoot looks. Maybe try to give him some more shots coming off screens and stuff. But and, and coming off screens, being able to make quick decisions. But you don't want you don't. No one wants to see Livers try to dribble the ball and try to do something with the ball in his hands. That's not what you want to see him do. With Monty, with the offense they're going to run, it's going to be quick decisions, high processing. A guy who can space the floor. You either shoot the ball, you pass, cut, shoot, pass, cut. It's all those kind of things. And Livers is going to thrive in that. That's another guy and a player that I'm sure a lot of you guys are not going to want to hear this, but Monty's going to love Killian Hayes. If Killian Hayes is still in the roster next year, which I think he's going to be, it's all things I've heard say he's going to be in the roster next year. He's going to be the backup point guard. He's a guy that Monty's going to love. A high-process guard who makes the right plays, who is a high-level playmaker, a, a good, really good defender with size and potential. That's exactly what Monty likes. There, there are a ton of players on this roster that fit what Monty likes with high processing, high feel, high IQ, good playmakers that make the right plays and plays for each other. Those are the kind of players that Monty Williams likes. That's the kind of plays, that's the kind of offense we have been begging for from the Pistons for a while now. And we're going to get that with Monty Williams. I'm so excited for this, man. It's, it's, this is going to be absolutely fantastic. I can't wait to watch this team with Monty. I can't wait to see who they draft now. Imagine having... Oh, my God. I don't want to get into that right now, man. It's, I'm too excited, dude. I, who they pick at the draft. Who they decide to sign. Like, this could very well be a really, really good offseason for the Pistons, man. Really good off or offseason for the Pistons. I can't wait. But Monty, that's why you should really like Monty. All those reasons I just brought up. I can't wait to see the offense. The offense, I feel like, is going to look so different. So different. It's going to have all five guys being a part of the offense. It's not going to be just two guys sitting in the corner and, and, and it's just involving one guy or two guys. Guys are going to space out. Guys will space out to the corner. But all five guys will be a part of this offense. All five guys will be a part of having to make a read and process and make things happen within the offense to keep it all flowing. It's going to look so different. It's going to look different, man. It's going to look different from what we've had to deal with. I can't wait. I cannot wait, man. Let me know in the comment section how you guys feel about this. Are you guys excited for Monty Williams? What is the biggest reason you're interested in Monty Williams or excited about Monty Williams? Again, let me know in the comment section down below or over on Twitter at Kuka Hill. When we come back, does hiring Monty Williams change the expectations for the Detroit Pistons next season? We'll talk about that when we come back. But first, you guys, a guy here from some of our lovely sponsors. So I want to thank you guys again for making Lockdown Pistons your first listen of every single day. We're free and available on all your podcast platforms. If you haven't already, head to the YouTube channel at Lockdown Pistons. Hit that subscribe button or leave us a five-star review on whatever podcast platform you're listening to us on. That's another great way to support the podcast. I just got to take a second again to say thank you to all you guys, man. My mom, my aunt made a GoFundMe for my wife to pay for all her hospital bills that have been stacking up now. And, you know, we're both going to be off of work the next two months. So we made a GoFundMe. 
and all of you, uh, so many of you guys, man, showed up. Our goal was five thousand. You guys have it right now at like eleven point five thousand dollars, dude. I like, I, I, I have to continue to say thank you and bring it up, man, because it's, it's. I don't want to get emotional on the podcast, man, but you guys are amazing. All of you guys who donated and sent prayers and and thoughts, and we have felt it so much, man, and and it's helped her push through it. And, and and already get started on her recovery process, man. I, I appreciate y'all so much. Uh, you guys don't understand how much this means to us. So thank you guys so much, for real. Um, but does hiring... Let's get back to the Monty Williams news. Um, does hiring Monty Williams change the expectations for the Detroit Pistons next year? I, I could understand why someone would say yes, but I can also understand why someone would say no. So I'm going to go ahead and side with... I don't think it changes the expectations... I think it just raises the possible ceiling. Like, I think the expectations will remain the same. I think they they want to see improvement next year. I think they want to be hovering around the mid-30s wins, like maybe low 30s to, to mid-30s wins. I think that's what they're aiming for. I think that's, that's what they want. But I think the ceiling raises a little bit higher with Monty and it, with some of the players that could possibly go after. So if they let's basically what I'm trying to say is, I think they're they're what they want next year is still the same. I think before they hired Monty, they probably would want to win around 33 games. Signing Monty, I think they want to win around 33 games. I think that's the idea. You want to get close to doubling the win total from last year, which was 17 wins. I think that's what they want to get to. But with hiring Monty, with how he runs the offense, with how with the personnel he's going to have to run with that offense, I think the ceiling is much higher than it would have been with like a Kevin Ollie, like it would have been with a Charles Lee possibly, because. Monty will know how to maximize these guys. Monty will know how to make this thing run. And it's probably going to take some time for guys to get used to it, for guys to get accustomed to his system. Um, but I think the ceiling is like 38 wins with Monty. I, like, I don't think they can get to 40 wins because that would just be an insane jump. And you don't see that kind of stuff. That's 23 wins. That doesn't happen. You don't see that happen. 23 wins is a lot of wins. And I'm saying 38. That's 21. That's a ton of wins. But with potentially who they can pick at five, potential with some potential guys they can get in free agency, combined with how Monty likes to run his team, combined with another jump from Cade with this offense, I don't think the expectations change. But, man, the, the ceiling that could possibly happen, man, is there. It, it could be crazy. It could be crazy, man. And next year, I think no doubt. I think no doubt next year is going to be a much more fun year for the Pistons fans. It's going to be it's going to be much more entertaining to watch. It, it, you're not going to watch games. You're just like you feel like you're forcing yourself to watch a Pistons game. You're going to want to watch Pistons games. You're going to like watching them play offensively. You're going to see how why having two guards who are good playmakers who are able to create for themselves and others while also having a five man who can who can. Uh, uh, make passing reads that can make reads within an offense that, are, that is a high processor in Duran. While having all those guys, while potentially adding another high processor and playmaker like a Sar Thompson or a Jairus Walker in free agency, you're going to see why all that matters so much. You're going to understand why processing, feel, uh, 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 decision making, all those things really matters within the offense. You're going to see why this year. And it's going to be a lot of fun, man. So, I, I look, I can't wait. I can't wait for it, man. Um, but th- it's going to be a quick podcast, man, just to talk about. I want to get this out there for you guys. I got to get to bed. I, I Look, I- I'm recording this at like 12 o'clock. Um, I have to be back at the hospital for my wife in like five, six hours. So I need to go get to bed. I got to get this up. I got to edit it for you guys. So I got. it's going to be a short podcast, but for I want to hear from you guys. How excited are you guys about Monty versus the, pe- the other outcomes that could have been there? How excited are you guys right now for Monty Williams? What are your guys' expectations now for next season? Let me know all those things in the comment section down below or over on Twitter at Kook Hill. Again, I want to thank all of you guys for everything. I, that's the last time I'll do it. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you guys for making Lockdown Pistons your first listen of every single day. Free and available on all your podcast platforms. Hit that subscribe button to the YouTube channel. Leave us a five-star review whenever podcast platform you're listening to this on. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. Stay safe. Enjoy these finals. Thank you all again. Until next time, peace out.